This is Jeffrey Gurian for GNN, Eugene, Oregon. Korea criminal Horace Pentathene literally carved himself a place in the annals of crime today by being the only man to ever rob a bank with his chin. Horace Pentathene did not always look like this. There was a time that Horace was a normal looking little boy until that fateful day when his parents took him to that Thanksgiving Day parade and he accidentally got sucked into the bell of a very large trombone. They rushed poor Horace to the hospital where a nice doctor from another land removed Horace from the trombone and tried his best to repair Horace's damaged chin which unfortunately was left as sharp and pointy as a knife. The doctor tried convincing Horace that it was a good look for him, saying, Don't worry Horace, you look really sharp. But that was the start of Horace's deep inferiority complex. The children in school tormented Horace, throwing apples and sandwiches that stuck on his chin. They also used him as a barbecue skewer and to slice up their pizza. They even invited him to the school picnic just to use his chin to eat corn on the cob. The school custodial staff did their part in making Horace feel good about himself by using him as a cleaning tool in the schoolyard. Horace's mother did her best to make him feel useful using his head as a kitchen utensil. Oh Horace, you're such a helpful son. I'm sorry the onions are making you cry. And so did his father, who tended to use Horace's face as a multi-purpose tool, kind of like a Swiss army knife. Horace's chin also came in handy for whittling and for difficult electrical repairs. Thanks, son. You know I couldn't have done this without you. In high school, Horace tried his best to act like the other kids and actually almost attended the prom until he accidentally ripped his date's dress and her jugular vein after trying his best to snuggle up to her for the photos. Horace had been a promising violinist but had to give that up too when he destroyed one violin after the next. Horace's inferiority complex got worse and worse and he developed a temper to match. That's when his physical appearance began to change. He began his descent into crime and insanity and you could tell something was very wrong just by looking at him. He became a bad drinker and was arrested more than once for pulling his chin on a guy during a bar fight. Anytime he heard a remark having anything at all to do with a knife, he went absolutely berserk. The last time it happened, all the guy said to Horace was, Hey, you're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And that's all it took to set him off. It was after that most recent arrest that Horace was forced to carry his chin in a sheath. He tried growing a beard to camouflage his chin, but it wasn't that effective. Not able to find a job and becoming more and more antisocial, Horace was driven to a life of crime. In his desperation, he decided to rob a bank, hoping he could use the money to reshape his chin. Once in the bank, he got the teller's attention by pounding his chin on her window into a stack of deposit slips, piercing them easily like one of those sharp spindles they use to pierce checks in a restaurant. He passed her a note saying, I've got a chin. Fill this bag with money or I'll use it. Fortunately, the teller had the presence of mind to press the silent alarm and within minutes, Pentathene was surrounded by shotgun-wielding police. Realizing his chin was no match for their shotguns, he put it back in its sheath and meekly surrendered. After first claiming to have had a carry permit for his chin, which later turned out not to be the case. Sorry bud, this chin license is expired. Pending his trial, Pentathene has been remanded to the county jail where they were threatening to have his chin removed if he didn't behave himself. The warden said, Well, uh, we don't allow prisoners to carry weapons in here, and uh, this guy's chin certainly falls into that category. He's here two hours and already tried throwing his chin at one of the guards. And so the moral of the story is, never take your child to a Thanksgiving Day parade and let him fall into the bell of a trombone unless you want him to turn out exactly like Horace Pentathene, one of the most unusual criminals in history. More on that story as it develops. On 
on our later broadcast these interesting stories. Man with infant's head sues for discrimination. Luigi Capo Danfante is suing a major Wall Street firm for not hiring him because he has the head of a six-month-old infant. The firm says that's nonsense and that Danfante was not qualified to run a hedge fund since the only thing he ever ran was the cash register in a bakery. Denfante further claims he had no idea his last name translates to mean head of an infant in Italian and that it's merely a coincidence. More on that story at 11. We'll have the captivating story of the college professor with a removable spine who was fired for casually removing his spine in class, slumping to the floor in a pile of clothing and begging the students to help him reinsert his spine. Now it's in the courts. We'll have the touching story of a man who, despite the efforts of an international team of specialists, developed a fully grown turtle shell, enveloping the entire upper half of his body, leaving him with a closet full of ill-fitting suits. In his words, I used to feel I cut sort of a dashing figure, but none of my suits fit properly anymore, since Armani doesn't make jackets to fit over a shell. More on that coming up. And finally... The fascinating story about George Washington's wooden pants, currently on display at the Smithsonian Institute, featuring George's first diapers, which were made out of bark and had to be hammered closed with nails. Stay still, George. This will only take a minute. Those and other stories on our later broadcast, brought to you only by GNN. <laughs>